Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the meeting rooms 2 problem. Given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end times, find the minimum number of conference rooms required. Example 1. The input is this list of intervals. So every interval has a start time and an end time. And every interval is a meeting. So as you can see, the output is 2 because you need two rooms for these meetings. Why? Because we need one room for the meeting that starts at 0 and ends at 30, and then we need another room for these two meetings. And because these two meetings do not overlap, we can use the same room for them. As you can see, this one starts at time 5 and ends at time 10, and this one starts at time 15 and ends at time 20. So as you can see, they do not overlap, so they can use the same room. But this one ends at time 30, so it overlaps. So it needs its own room. Example 2, the intervals is this list that only has one interval. It only has one meeting, so we only need one room. So how can we solve this problem? We can solve this problem by sorting every interval by the start time. And then we can use a data structure like a priority queue to sort the end times of every interval. And then we traverse the intervals. And as we traverse the interval, we push the end times to the priority queue. And pu uh, push into a priority queue takes big O log n time. So we push every end time to the priority queue. And we check if the start time, we check if the end time of this interval is greater than the start time of the next interval. If that's the case, they overlap. So we need to have a separate room. But if that's not the case, if, this, if the end time of this interval, for example, is less than or equal to the start time of this interval, then th they do not overlap. So they can have or they can use the same room. So that's the main idea here. So the time complexity would be big O n log n because we have to sort by the start time. And the space complexity would be big O of n because we are using a priority queue for the end times. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. First, I'm going to sort every interval or the list by the start time of every interval. So I'm going to say collections that sort the intervals. So I will have a lambda a, b, a that start minus b that start. So what I'm doing here is that I'm sorting the list by the start time. So all the intervals will be sorted by the start time. Like in this example here, as you can see, it is already sorted. So 0, then 5, and then 15. Sorted in ascending order. So after I saw the intervals, I need to have a priority queue of integer. PQ gets a value of new priority queue. And in this priority queue, I'm going to have all the end times of the intervals. And the priority queue will keep the minimum end time at the top. So as you can see, that's the main property of the priority queue. You can have a, a minimum priority queue or a, or a maximum priority queue. In this case, I have a minimum priority queue. So every time, I will have the minimum at the top. So I will have access to the minimum. And then I can compare the minimum end time with the start time of this interval. and if they do not overlap, then they can be in the same room. Otherwise, I have to have another room for this interval. 
And I didn't tell you this, but as you can see, I'm using a lambda here. But I can also use I can also use a comparator. I can use a comparator, but I prefer to use uh, a lambda. So then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to traverse from left to right. So for interval, interval, in intervals. And I will check every interval. And if not pq that is empty and pq that pick is less than or equal to interval that start then pq that pull so if i have something in the priority queue and the minimum or the top element in the priority queue which is an end time is less than or equal to the start time of this interval that means that they do not overlap so I can use the same room for these two intervals so what I do is that I remove the minimum end time from the priority queue so uh, to indicate that I can use the same room for this interval and after I remove that minimum end time I can just say pq dot offer interval dot end then I only have to worry about the end time for this new interval so every time I push the end time for the interval and the priority queue will keep those end times in the way that I need them so the minimum will be at the top then I just need to return pq that size because by the end the priority queue will contain only the end times of the meetings that um, the number of end times will be equal to the number of meetings that I need as you can see I always push the end times to the priority queue but if I find out that the minimum of the priority queue is less than or equal to the start time of this interval I remove the end time for that um, I remove the end time for that interval and push the end time for this new interval so I will run the code it seems to work fine I'm going to submit a solution Alright, so this is working perfectly. As I said before, the time complexity is big O n log n because of the sort. The space complexity is big O of n. If you like this video, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.